Welcome to QI. <laughs> hey, this is our vodcast. All right. OK. Enjoy the vodcast. I don't know what it means. we have been quite full, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was on this show before. Yeah. I seem to remember talking to you about you giving Prince Charles a uh, coffee, shit coffee that yes. had been through a monkey or something, and they Civic dipped it out. Coffee. Civic cat coffee, exactly that. And yeah. what's that then? It's gone through. It's there. a Vietnamese civet poo coffee. They eat the green coffee, yeah, and then they poo it and out. They crap it out, and, and yeah. then you obviously clean it up and yeah. grind it, it, and it's better. Better for the thing to do with the intestinal juices. I gave someone sweet corn and they weren't happy at all. <laughs> <laughs> I got a police caution. <laughs> Just a lot of time and effort went into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, sorry, I was just miming thinking sweet corn out of shit. What, yeah. <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> What's this, the groove? Do you know what this is called? That's the Someone's that's arch. You. Cupid's arch? No. Mm, no. Proper name for it. Uh, it uh, uh, snot bobsler. Anyone know? <laughs> snot <laughs> yes. snot bobsler. Someone's going to know in the audience. Do the audience know? <laughs> they know. Filtrum. I knew it's the filter with a PH. Filtrum. You get a lot of medical but students in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, about the, what about the filter? What's the purpose, do you think? Just makes you more kissable, Stephen. Oh. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Stephen just barked at me, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's more it's, yeah. Of course, it was quite fashionable the early part of the 20th century to grow moustaches in, just in the filth. Who did that? I oh, I remember there was a fellow who was a bad man. Yes, what was his name? <laughs> it, oh, I can't remember his Charlie name. Charlie Chaplin, man. that's the one. <laughs> yes. And Adolf Hitler. Uh, Robert Mugabe also had one, and I think he still does. A little filth from moustache. And Oliver Hardy had one for quite a long time. But do you know why, why we have them? No discernible reason. Well, they never function, but they have a cause. I mean, there's a reason they're there. They, they've been caused is by it, something. Is it that it's when you, when you form as a child? When you if form. you get a cleft palate, you, uh, that hasn't fully formed. It's the, the last bit that forms, isn't it? Well, that's right. It's the left and right sides of the embryo meeting. And, the, and the body is symmetrical, more or less, as you know. And, in fact, we have another seam, if you like, between the anus and the root of the scrotal sac, if you're a man. Oh, ah. called, the, called the taint. Which is the perineum. perineum. Biffin's bridge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that is a, very much a seam where the two sides meet. And also the, the little... Bit in the chin here. Uh, they're called rafes, and it's where the two bits match up. I prefer Biffin's Bridge. Do you? I think your Biffin's Bridge is Have very nice. Have you been nice. rambling there? <laughs> very good. Thank so you. What, so what does it do? It doesn't do anything, really, to be honest. It you stops can, people from seeing your teeth. Yeah. You might just be able to get, if, it's, if you've got a deep one, you can drink beer and breathe at the same time. You can let the air, I mean, you can let the air out of the bottle at the same time, because it just... Just do that. Some people can. Do well. you grow to do that if your father worked for the Muppet Show? <laughs> <laughs> and have sex with a puppet? You can't do it from a bottle and brew it. I have to confess, I will bow to you superior knowledge. No, because I now see I wasted three weeks ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> Experimenting. But yeah, <laughs> the first person to a plastic surgeon going, I was told categorically I would be able to breathe and drink from a bottle at the same time. <laughs> Just this bit in the middle it isn't working properly, and I want it better up and closer together. What's made from E941, E948, E936, E290, and E939, and what happens if you have some? E4037. <laughs> Very good. Does it add up to that? No if shit, it doesn't. <laughs> But what would happen, all those E numbers, imagine, trying to have a oh, is it, wild it, plump. have a mad is half hour running around the living room. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Don't be mad. Oh, that was a bit mean of them, wasn't it? Yep. Oh, because you were thinking of hyperactivity, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. It's uh, not one of those. It's not one of those tartrazine oh, sunset oh. yellow ones. <laughs> yes. Is it the new Bacon McFlurry? <laughs> <laughs> spangles. Not Spangles, no. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Smarties. Magnums. No. <laughs> well, it's, it's these, they're, they're colours, they're preservatives. Anything they're... you could possibly add to a food has to be given an E number. Yeah. In fact, there are E numbers for rust, aluminium, So you can silver. add rust to food. Well, I know, it's weird, isn't it? Formaldehyde, sand is E551. Spam, 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 spam. Yes, darling. It's a bon fiesta. <laughs> The new, oh, the new, the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one with the E-940. That's the one. <laughs> um, actually, 
I'll tell you what they all are. E941 is nitrogen. E948 is oxygen. Air. Yes, air is. I was just giving you air in E numbers. Well done. Uh, Bizarre. Uh, uh. So nothing much would happen except you'd carry on living. Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> great, thank you. <laughs> it's not so bad. Have you got any less of that? <laughs> so the point is, nothing would happen to you. They are the main ingredients of air. Now to something rather more substantial. What would a Tyrannosaurus Rex taste like? Chicken? Oh, 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 Phil, yes. <laughs> We thought we'd double bluff you and you'd go, uh, not chicken, but it is chicken. Well, they're, 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 they're birds. To they are birds, yeah. and there is a man from Harvard University who is completely convinced oh, that T-Rex tasted of chicken. Hey, sorry, he's completely convinced. <laughs> convinced yeah. Yeah. What's he's done the reason he's gone, oh, it tastes like Stegosaurus at all. Yeah. Right? Of course, everything tastes like Stegosaurus. No, I'll give you his theory. It's a little bit complicated. Things that taste of chicken must have a common ancestor that also tasted of chicken. He tasted a number of different animals and found out that all birds, some mammals, and all reptiles taste of chicken. Uh, all other mammals taste of pork or beef, while all seafood have a seafoody taste. He has hypothesized <laughs> that based on the fact that its closest modern relatives are chickens and other chicken-flavored lizards, T-Rex must have tasted of chicken. Could she could you not ask him? Is like he chicken. still working out of the university, or is he now working out of the car park? No, well, <laughs> also, it okay, yeah, depends what you do with a T-Rex. I mean, I imagine it'd be slightly tough imagine after all these years. No, not the clowns. Yeah. Yeah. If you could afford just a little arms. Well, and said, you know, just nice, go, I don't, I don't want the rest of it. What well, a waste that would be. Just them. T-Rex wings. <gasps> just a box of T-Rex. Yeah, the arms. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a very interesting thing about some, I think this is quite interesting, the Diplodocus, right, huh? lived 140 million years ago, a long time ago, in a Jurassic period, right? And then it died out, and then various other dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus rex behind us, that appeared. But do you know, we are closer in time to the Tyrannosaurus rex than the Tyrannosaurus rex is to the Diplodocus. Yeah, it's astonishing. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that's interesting. Who, who do we buy a card for at Christmas? Well, <laughs> one for each, if we can afford it, I think. Yeah, but you, you, you buy a pack of cards for the yeah, Diplodocus, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. And then you buy the individual ones for the Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's, that's how it goes. a bit closer. You're you, right. You sort of go, <laughs> you sort of go thanks, for, thanks for sticking around and trying to make it to my birthday. I was on a holiday with the late, great Peter Cook, and we'd been going up the Nile, and we hadn't had a newspaper for a very long time, and he loved newspapers. And he eventually found this old heap of newspapers in a shop somewhere in Luxor or something. And there was this big thing about Elizabeth Taylor um, putting on weight. And the spokesman said it's her glands. And Peter went off with this, is, yes, poor woman, it's just completely unfair. She'd be sitting in a suite in the inn on the park and suddenly her glands will pick up the phone and order a tray of eclairs and a bottle of <laughs> Oh, she was screaming, it's too late, the order's gone through. <laughs> <laughs> she tries to wrestle the glands away, but they yank open the door and stuff them down her f***ing throat. <laughs> You've been listening to the QI Vodcast. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear.